Hi, I'm Tony and welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the RIW helmet. RIW is RI's entry level helmet. Now that doesn't compare to the entry level helmet for most brands. We're talking about a premium brand here and their entry level means you're spending around 300 pounds. It's 300 for plain colors and 380 for a graphic design like this one here. It's called the W, but really this helmet is very, very heavily based on a previous Arrow model called the Access 3. The Access 3 was discontinued and what that left was quite a gap in Arrow's range where the entry level for them was considerably more expensive. They needed something in this price bracket around about £300, so they very mildly tweaked the design for the Access 3 and hey presto, we've got the Arrow W. It's been around for a couple of years now and it's become quite popular with customers. The debut shell is made from Arai's superfiber laminate material. It's their entry level shell, it's their most basic material, but it's hardly basic. It's still a laminate of fibers designed to give the strength that Arai demand. This helmet is slightly heavier than the average for this style and this size. We weighed this one on our scales and this is a size medium. We weighed it at 1,572 grams, which is a little bit above the average, as I said. But that weight isn't accidental. Our eye have deliberately chosen to have a stronger and heavier shell for a variety of reasons. It means they can run a softer polystyrene liner on the inside, the bit that actually does the work in an impact. And they say that a softer liner gives you better protection in an accident. A stronger shell also resists penetration. Even if the safety certification they're aiming for doesn't demand that a shell passes a penetration test, our eye carry one out anyway. And what that involves is dropping a pointed weight on the helmet to make sure that it doesn't break through the shell and reach the inside of the helmet. The shell on the debut has four main ventilation points. At the top, there's a three-stage sliding switch. You can have it fully open, fully closed, or halfway between the two to bring in some cooling air. And that works in tandem with a switchable set of exhaust vents at the back here. Again, they can be open, closed, or midway between the two, so you can tune the amount of air that that allows to escape. The chin vent, again, three stages of opening, fully closed, halfway, or fully open to bring in a cooling amount of air. And then there's the final set of vents, which is an Arai trademark, the brow vents. These are really effective, actually. You spin this shutter open here, and that brings air through to the helmet, it's channeled in through these ducts here, and then that is channeled alongside your temples. And while you're riding, you can really feel the air flowing through there and just bringing that temperature down on the inside of the helmet. Surprisingly effective. On the subject of the visor, it's Arai's older I-type visor. It's pinlock protected and it's a pinlock 120 insert, which is pinlock's second highest grade of insert and it's a max vision insert, so it covers the vast majority of the visor aperture, so the pin lock will keep the vast majority of your vision clear from mist without actually interfering with your vision at any point. It's a simple lift off this tab on the left, and when it's closed, sliding that tab forward just locks the visor to stop the wind flow getting underneath and inadvertently lifting that. Now, one thing with the eye type visor that we're looking at here, it's harder to change the visor on this than it is on Arai's more recent VAS V type visor. It involves teasing out a lever inside there and then coaxing the visor clear of its mounting point in here. And then when you put it back, you've kind of, there's a degree of coaxing and it kind of feels like you're forcing it and you get some quite disconcerting plastic sounds when you're pushing that in there. It feels like you might break it. There is a knack to changing these visors and there are people who can change these in just a few seconds. It's something that you learn with time, but it can be disconcerting at first, so that's something worth bearing in mind with this helmet. And learning how to change the visor, getting hold of that knack, is something that's probably going to be worthwhile on this helmet because it doesn't come with a sun visor. Arai's philosophy is fundamentally against sun visors. They feel that adding some an extra visor on the inside means taking away protective EPS material and it's just something they won't do. 
which personally is something that I quite respect them for. If you want protection against glare from this helmet, there are some alternatives that are available. Arai's equivalent of a sun visor is what they call their Pro Shade system, where you replace the outer visor with an additional visor that has a tinted section that slides up and down across the front here. You can alternatively replace the pin lock with a light reactive protectant insert, which reacts to the sunlight and will darken as the daylight gets brighter. Or the final option is to, is to switch between dark tinted visors and the clear visor, depending on the daylight conditions. You are running a bit of a risk with the law because it's not road legal to use a visor that's tinted and allows through less than 50% of the outside transmission. So a light smoke visor can be road legal, but one of those dark smoke visors that racers use, that wouldn't be legal. So you are running a legal risk with that. Arai are famous for lots of things with helmets, but probably the number one thing that people who are really into their Arai's talk about is the comfort, the interior. They're very, very plush and very, very soft and very forgiving interiors. Lots of people put these helmets on the head and just feel like it's slipping into a really comfortable armchair. This interior is Arai's most basic interior, but it's still their super soft interior, which uses a brushed nylon cover on really compliant, comfortable foam. The cheek pads are removable and so is the neck roll around here so they can be taken out and washed. But the rest of it, old school, it's fixed in place. So it's washable, but it has to be washed in situ. Our advice for washing the interior of this helmet is to put it upturned in the shower on a wet towel to protect the shell, wet the interior with lukewarm water from the shower head, wash the lining with baby shampoo, rinse it through and then hang it out on the washing line to dry. It's a bit of an old school method and it's a bit of a faff, but washing a lining realistically is something we maybe do once a year, maybe twice. So it's not too big a deal in your life if this is the kind of helmet that you're looking for. And to finish up, the strap, like all our eyes, is a simple D-ring arrangement, nothing complicated. It's exactly as you'd expect from a sporty helmet like this. On the whole, people who've bought the Arai debut helmet are really happy with it. There's a couple of issues that crop up. One is that the venting isn't the most effective, and there's also that difficulty in changing the visor that I mentioned earlier. I'd agree on both counts. It's not the most airy helmet, and that visor change is fiddly. But on the whole, people love the ability to get that Arai build quality, plushness and comfort without having to stretch their wallet quite as far as they would on the other models. I hope that gives you a really clear picture of the Arai debut helmet, but if there's anything you'd like to ask or add, please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.